This program is designed to alert you to some of the dangers of street crime and to suggest ways you can help yourself. Of course, every situation is unique. Should you become a crime victim, you must use your own judgment to decide what response is the best under the circumstances you face. Crimes. According to FBI statistics, there are 14 million committed every year in the United States. There's a violent crime every 19 seconds. Crime could happen to anybody, any place, any time. But you don't have to be one of the victims. This program reviews potentially dangerous situations people face every day. It also talks about sound, because loud, piercing sounds can actually keep crimes from even happening. The Remington Soundmate Siren is one way to have the power of sound with you when you need it. But awareness is also key. The more you know about the following safety tips, the better your chances are. Walking during the day. Walking is often a good way to get around, and it's healthy exercise. Here are some ideas for making it safer as well. Wear comfortable clothing and shoes. Don't attract unwanted attention. Keep jewelry out of sight. Conceal chains. Turn rings around so the settings are hidden inside your hand. If you don't need your purse when you reach your destination, then store it safely at work or leave it home. Consider a belt pack. Worn around the waist, these packs are harder to steal and more easily concealed than purses. If you need your purse, carry it under your coat if possible. Keep keys, money, and other important valuables in the pockets of your clothing. Don't carry anything with your address in the same place as your keys. A driver's license, checkbook, or bills can lead burglars to your home. Remember, wear comfortable clothing and shoes. Conceal jewelry. Protect your valuables. And always carry your Soundmate personal safety siren. Taking these precautions will take some time getting used to, but soon they will become a system you follow automatically. The same rules apply to walking at night. In addition, you should stay in well-lit areas. Criminals like the surprise and concealment darkness gives them. They don't want problems, so don't make yourself look like an easy target. Grip your purse firmly to discourage purse snatchers. However, don't wrap the strap around your arm. You risk injury if someone surprises you and yanks hard on the purse. Walk in the middle of the sidewalk. If somebody is hiding in an alley or doorway, they will have a harder time reaching you. If you walk to the same destination often, take different routes. Don't be too predictable. Realize that as you walk, a criminal might be sizing you up, looking for an easy victim. So look confident. It's your street, not theirs. Projecting a positive attitude can discourage a would-be assailant. One of the most important things when you're walking by yourself is to project an attitude that you're paying attention to what's going on around you, that you're not worried, you're not scared. If you're walking down the street, hold your head up. Act like you've got lots of energy. If somebody comes at you, you're going to be able to protect yourself. In other words, show that you're in control of your situation uh, will be sufficient very often to throw them off. It's not a guaranteed recipe for success because some people uh, are so confident of what they're going to do and have chosen their victim that it won't put them off. If somebody follows you or makes you feel uncomfortable, let them know you're on guard and therefore not an easy victim. There's a good chance your confidence alone will scare them off. If they persist, go where there are other people, a store, restaurant, or gas station. Remember, follow these common sense rules when you have to walk alone at night. Stay in well-lit areas. Project a confident attitude. If concerned, seek a public area. And always have your soundmate siren handy. Parking lots. Parking lots leave you especially vulnerable and require special precautions. Be aware of your surroundings. Watch for suspicious looking people. Park in a well-lighted area as close to your destination as possible. Always lock the doors on your vehicle, no matter how safe you feel or how short a time you will be gone. Locked doors are among the best crime deterrents there are. They slow down auto thieves who want to get in fast and escape. 
and locked doors can help keep a criminal from waiting inside your car. You are less likely to encounter problems if there is someone with you, so have somebody walk you to your car if possible. Have your keys in hand, ready to unlock your car the moment you arrive. Be alert as you walk. Check for suspicious looking people near your car. Also, look in the back seat. If everything's okay, get in immediately and relock the doors. If there's any problem, go to the nearest safe place and call the police or local security. Parking lots leave you vulnerable, so simple precautions can really pay off. Remember, park near your destination, keep doors locked, be aware, and use your soundmate siren keyring. Be ready for car trouble with an emergency envelope in your glove box. Write the first names and phone numbers of three people who would come help you. Keep this list in the envelope along with change for a payphone. Then, if someone offers to help, you can roll the window down an inch and safely give them the envelope. They'll call someone you trust, and if you don't know the person offering assistance, you won't have to get out of your car. Keep a call police sign to display in your window or on your hood to attract attention. While you're in a car, you've got some kind of security. Uh, lock your doors. There's a, a terrible temptation to try and leave or feel threatened in a car, but at least it's going to supply some kind of temporary security, um, even if you can't move. Unfortunately, not everybody who offers help really means it. Some criminals look for people having car trouble because they are easy targets, so be cautious and be prepared. A cellular phone can be invaluable if you have a breakdown. Keep a list of emergency numbers in the car so you can call for help without leaving your locked vehicle. Check with your mobile phone company to get help numbers for any location. Some companies provide the familiar dial 911 feature that connects you to the police immediately. If you travel through cities frequently, Add their police numbers to your emergency list. So, if you experience car trouble on the road, use your emergency envelope. Display your call police sign. If necessary, open your car's hood, then return to the car immediately. Cellular phones are not only convenient, but are a great help. Remember to keep your soundmate siren nearby. Automated teller machine safety. Automated teller machines have become a necessity for many in today's busy world. They're invaluable for people who don't have time to do their banking during business hours. Some criminals are also attracted to ATMs. The combination of inattentive users and the cash they withdraw is practically irresistible. Many ATM transactions take place outside normal business hours. At that time, the chances of being victimized are significantly greater. Bringing a friend with you is often the simplest, most effective precaution of all. As you approach your ATM, look around. If anybody is loitering nearby, go to another location. When using a walk-up ATM, park in a well-lit area as close to the machine as you can. Having your car handy means you can get away more quickly if something happens. If you need to make a deposit, have everything written out before you arrive. Don't stand at an ATM any longer than absolutely necessary. Stand directly in front of the ATM to block anyone's view of what you are doing, especially your personal identification or PIN number. When you get cash, put it out of sight immediately. Count the money in your locked car or some other secure place. To use a drive-up ATM, pull in as close as possible. Make sure your doors are locked. Keep all windows up until you are ready to use the machine. ATMs are a great convenience, but remember, avoid suspicious characters. Have your forms already filled out. Keep windows and doors closed, conceal your cash immediately, and have your soundmate siren handy. Public transportation, by train, by bus, by subway, it's convenient and cost-effective but it's also often crowded and chaotic. Criminals can use this confusion, so stay alert. A thief knows commuters may be bored, inattentive, and possibly traveling alone. As well, there may be few means of escape. This is why some pickpockets, purse snatchers, and muggers specialize in public transit crimes. 
Many big city systems have their own transit police. This often makes travelers feel safe, but the police can't be everywhere. You need to help yourself by using common sense and following tips like these. Stand near others as you wait for your bus or train. Be wary if somebody seems to purposely jostle you. A person blocking your path may be intentionally restricting your movement. Don't get distracted by loud arguments. This may be a ploy. A thief knows if you're watching them, you're not watching your wallet, purse, or packages as carefully as you should be. Don't carry valuables if you can avoid it. Men shouldn't carry wallets in their back pants pockets where they are easier to steal. Keep wallets in a front pants or coat pocket and button or zip the closure if possible. Women should carry purses in front of themselves and close to their body. Carry shoulder bags under your coat when possible. Don't handle your wallet or change purse needlessly. Have your fare counted and ready when boarding a bus or train or purchase tokens in advance. A fare card or monthly pass will further smooth the way for frequent riders. Once aboard a train or bus, sit close to the driver if other passengers cause you concern. Most drivers are trained to handle emergency situations. They can be in instant contact with law enforcement by way of two-way radios. A bus or train ride can put you to sleep, but don't let it happen. It's dangerous. Criminals look for easy prey, and a person sleeping is a perfect opportunity. When you arrive at your stop, move away purposefully and quickly. If you need directions, try your bus driver or the booth attendant on a subway system. Using public transportation can make a lot of sense, and so do these precautions. Stay near others. Have the exact fare. Protect your possessions. Be alert and carry your Soundmate personal safety siren. The Soundmate siren. Sound in self-defense. What would you do if you were confronted by a criminal? One option is to shatter the criminal's precious secrecy with sound. A proven deterrent. Law enforcement professionals have long known that sound can be a potent crime stopper. It is commonly believed that sound-based alarm systems reduce home and auto burglaries substantially. The same principle works for self-defense. What's more, sound not only helps deter an attack, it also serves as a cry for help. Screaming is a natural sound deterrent. However, in a panic situation, it's also all too natural and common to freeze up in silence. A more reliable way of putting sound to work in self-defense is to carry a high-quality sound defense device, such as the Soundmate personal safety siren. The Soundmate should be carried for instant use should a potential threat appear. One important advantage of using sound as a defense is that it can be used early, before an attack occurs. The Soundmate siren has the potential to completely deter an attack. At the first sign of danger, a simple squeeze triggers a sound so loud and so unique that it can startle an attacker and give you a chance to escape. The Soundmate siren is so powerful it can attract witnesses and cause an attacker to flee for fear of getting caught. Unlike more violent and dangerous options, chemical sprays and firearms, Soundmate cannot be turned against you and is therefore less likely to escalate the violence of an attack. And sound making devices are legal for air travel. You can carry one wherever you go. Unfortunately, crime seems to be a part of life nowadays. But the Soundmate can be an effective defense. It can deter crime, signal for help, and it's safe and legal everywhere. If attempts to avoid or deter assault fail, what options are open? Which are best? Should you run? Should you hand over your valuables? There's no one answer to these questions. Situations and individuals differ. You will have to make a choice based on your assessment of the situation you face. If somebody has walked up to you and they've got a weapon and they're saying, I want your valuables, you got to make a conscious decision. These are things. This is money. This is, you know, stuff. Um, if this person's willing to hurt me for my stuff, let them have my stuff. And we train people in uh, businesses, um, hey, let them have your stuff. 
Maybe we can get your stuff back for you later, but it's just things. Keeping calm may seem impossible when confronted by a criminal, but that's what you need to do. The normal reaction, the one the criminal wants, is shock. Shock gives them control of the situation. So, take a deep breath and try to collect your thoughts. Stay calm, observe, analyze. Decide what to do to get out of the situation with the least possible harm. When confronted, physical resistance should only be a last resort. If an attacker is armed, then your goal must be to escape unharmed. Don't let your anger get in the way. Don't try to be a hero. Don't try to win a fight. Don't provoke the start of any violence, even if you've had a self-defense class. Self-defense is great for your confidence, but if you take one course uh, 35 years ago and don't practice, don't keep up to date, um, you lose it. We have to go to uh, pressure point tactics classes. We have to retrain with those every year. We have to shoot our guns four times a year and requalify, you know, in different weather, different light structures. If you don't use it, you lose it. It's not like riding a bicycle. When confronted with the potential of violence, the rules are simple. Try to stay calm. Never initiate violence. Use your sound mate, Siren, as your first defense. And remember, your only goal is to escape unharmed. If you become a crime victim, following a few simple steps will greatly increase the odds the perpetrator gets caught and punished. Next to preserving your own safety, this should be your most important goal. Immediately contact the police and seek medical assistance. Accurate information will give the police their best chance of making an immediate arrest. Even minutes after the event, you may not be able to remember all the details. So, write down everything that happened. Write everything that was said word for word. And most importantly, make as complete a record as you can of the criminal's physical description. Remember, in the event of a confrontation or assault, call the police immediately. Seek medical attention. Write down exactly what happened. There are many excellent sources for more information on this subject, so contact your local police department or the public library. Remington, the makers of the SoundMate personal safety siren, hope this program will help you to avoid becoming victims of crime. We believe it will help you to feel more confident in your day-to-day -day activities and as you travel.